we run a service called uh, Zero Trust, which basically allows us to connect users to whatever they need, um, applications, data, and services from wherever they work, while providing all the security functions as well. Today, mobility is, is everywhere, laptops, phones, things of that nature. Uh, we were founded on the idea that users and people would not be restricted to offices, and so the need for them to connect to applications um, in a secure way couldn't be done with firewalls and basically perimeter-based or castle and moat type of strategies. Uh, but this, this is back in the day where uh, BlackBerry was the, the primary type of mobile device. So, you know, we wanted to figure out a way to both allow users to basically work from anywhere, but ensure that they're able to connect to what they need to do their job while maintaining security at the same time. Uh, typically malware defense and things of that nature, but preventing breaches, uh, data loss, um, and, and things that would harm a business. And so this is really what kicked off the journey. You know, create a, create a, you know they call it zero trust now, but create a SaaS platform, the SaaSification of secure connectivity um, is really what we were all about. There's actually a few problems, right? Most people think that the core issue today is everybody's working from home. So how do you really allow them to connect to whatever applications they need, like in the office or in AWS? But the, but the actual, the second issue here is applications used to all be in an office. And so what you would do is you turn on a VPN to connect to these applications in an office, turn off the VPN when you don't need those applications whenever you're remote, but the applications have now scattered everywhere. So they're not, they're not longer just sitting in an office, they're in AWS, they're SaaS applications, they're in data centers, so you really can't have users that are turning on VPNs for every time they want to connect to different applications in five different locations. So this idea that instead of a VPN that does this type of work to connect people, why, why can't the user be connected to a service, like a zero trust service, and the service actually connects them to whatever they need automatically, but it's always there, it's always on, but it's connecting them based off who they are, so based off their identity, uh, user, group, and things of that nature, as well as when it comes to security, you can't have security that only works, network security, when someone's sitting in an office because when they're working from home, they're using their own internet. So, so this solves both the ability to connect the users to these applications without knowing where they're at. I see a future, like the legacy in the past, you, you have a very poor end user experience with VPNs. In the future, a user is working and opening up a browser, they don't know where those applications are. Some happen to be in an office, some happen to be in a data center, some happen to be in AWS. They're, they're actually automatically connected and so they can just do their job and connect to these applications directly. From a security side, they're getting malware defense, data loss prevention, CASB, all of these security functions, but without gear. So you can do it at scale um, and you get all, of all the visibility. A lot of the vendors here at RSA, for example, they require visibility into the events, into the logs. And so we're generating an event and a lot for every single access. So it's providing a lot of visibility. It feeds a lot of the platforms as well. Netflix got rid of DVD players, but the movies didn't change. So we see this as the, the sassification of the way people connect in a secure way to whatever they need. So our future here is the connectivity is oxygen. So without a connection that's fast and, and secure, you can't work. So we want to be the core of every organization so that they can get security technology that they want to buy, other, maybe other types of technology, identity providers, and glue them all together so that every time someone wants to access uh, something, it runs through iBoss. We're doing over 150 billion transactions a day now with the largest organizations in the world. Um, yeah, organizations like ADP, Intel, and others. Um, but we want to be, make this available to everybody because once, it, once something becomes SaaS, technology that was unavailable to certain organizations, especially when you don't have a place to install the gear, like you don't have a place to put the firewalls and the proxies, um, this, becomes a, this becomes a really um, nice solution to solve those particular cases. So we want to connect everyone and everything, but we also want to connect APIs, non-human entities. If there's going to be data moving from one place to another, we want that to run through us. We're, we're actually going down market and we can do five users or we can do 500,000 users in, in, in less than 30 seconds. The term zero trust is used a lot, right? But it's actually really simple and, and it's actually easy to understand no matter who you are. When you think about an, an airport, the thing you're trying to protect is an airplane, right? There's two ways that you can prevent an attack on an airplane. You could try to figure out who might be an attacker in the, in the world, that's eight billion people or more. How do, you, how do you determine who might be wanting to harm a plane? Or you can invert the, the solution and, and look at it from a perspective of who's actually going to board the plane. There's only 500 people. So if you actually reduce the scope from billions of people that you might be causing harm to a plane to only 500, you put a checkpoint in front of the plane, and then you basically check identity and only let people pass when there's no weapons or other things in their bag, uh, letting them cross across this checkpoint. It's the same, Zero Trust is the same thing, except it's not an airplane, it's data and, and applications. So we put a checkpoint in front of those applications, making them completely private, 
There's no way you could get to these applications front door without going through us, which is a checkpoint. We run malware, DLP, we run basically, make, instead, of a, instead of a weapon like a gun, we're looking for a, a ransomware, malware. We're opening, instead of opening luggage, we're opening the, the traffic, we're opening the files that are being transferred and looking for ransomware. But we're doing this for each and every single request. And there's no way you can interact with an application data or service unless we've authorized that particular transaction from occurring. So you know, this really solves both a connectivity problem and a security problem because we're connecting you to what you need, the application you need, because you, can, you can't get to that application without going through us. But we're also running all the security functions as well because we need to open the bags to make sure there's no weapons getting on this plane. In our case, we need to make sure there's no ransomware, there's no data loss, there's no data hijacking. I mean, I think that ultimately, if you look at CISA, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, they did, a, they did a report on ransomware in 2021 and they wanted to understand what the root cause was. They did this with UK and the Australian government as well as all the federal agencies in the US. There was three initial infection vectors, vulnerabilities, so, you know, bugs in software, phishing, which everybody knows about, and stolen credentials. But if you think about those three, what was really the root cause? Unauthorized access. Why did someone have access to the software to begin with? And they were, that was, that even if the software was vulnerable, if you can't get to the software, it, it mitigates the risk. If someone steals your credentials, but they have nowhere to punch the credentials in because they can't get to that software, that also protects the software as well, protects that data, data hijacking. So Zero Trust is really about solving for the root cause of today's most prolific problem, ransomware bre and breaches, right? And that's, what I, that's something we really enjoy and that's why we, we love what we do. Think about this, you can't just allow a, a group of people to get on the plane, every single bag, every single request needs to be checked. That's the core difference between us and a VPN. A VPN, you log in and it's just free traffic for us. For us, it's every bag gets opened, every single transaction. Yeah, we love about, look, we're back in person again, so it's a great place to have everybody in, in the same city. So the volume of meetings, back-to-back -back meetings is, is nice because we can do face-to-face. -face. So it really enables um, digital leaders, technical leaders, security leaders to come together. We want to connect with our existing customers. We want to connect with prospects. I um, mean, we really want to, I think ultimately, we're here to bridge a gap. We want to solve a real problem. The world is, is hybrid at best, remote at best. There's, mobility is permanent. So there's nothing more important than the connectivity and the security. And so that's a, it's, a, it's a really critical problem that we're looking to solve.